What's going on everybody? Josh here with Scrapyard Films. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make awesome lower thirds part two. I made some lower thirds a while back and since then I've improved my skills and I'm going to be showing you how to make some even better ones. In the timeline right here I actually have what we're going to be making so I'm going to show you real fast. You see it just rolls out from the side and then shows the text on the background and then rolls away. And it's not just a black background, it's actually a transparent background. If you right click, hit properties, go to media, and then go to alpha channel, and then do straight unmatted or pre-multiplied, either war, and you'll see it is transparent and removable. In the description below, I put a link to a folder to download that contains icons and backgrounds, because this whole tutorial will be showing you how to do it, and I'm going to be providing it to you for free. So go ahead and download that, and then we can get started, because we'll be using the files out of that folder. Once you've done that, load it up, bring it in here, and we're going to do just, well, let's try the YouTube one. So let's drag the YouTube icon inside here first, which is the 512 by 512 YouTube icon. So we click this, and you see it's just a five second picture of a perfectly circle icon with a black background. But this background isn't actually black, it is transparent, because this is a PNG. So we're going to make it to about the length of the lower thirds that we want, which a good number is about eight seconds. So let's drag this up about three more seconds right here. And now we have eight seconds. First thing is we want to make it spin. So before we get started, we got to make sure your project is in the proper settings. So if you go to file, go to properties, make sure you have it set to 59 frames a second, full resolution rendering quality just make it best motion blur type. We're going to do Gaussian asymmetric and then resample mode. We're going to be doing disable resample. Hit apply, and we're ready to start. So first thing is we're gonna make this thing roll. We're gonna open up the cropping tool right here, and then we're gonna go out about two seconds, roughly right about there, and then verify you're right at the two second mark. Add a keyframe, because that's the final position it's gonna be landing in. So we're gonna click the first keyframe, and we're gonna rotate this thing. A good number I use is just 1280. You can use whatever you want, but that's a pretty decent number for me. So let's see what this looks like. Hit we play it. Perfect. So I dragged this picture out here so we could see it. And if we click on the first keyframe, we right click on it, we're going to tell it how we want it to spin. And we're going to say fast, because that means it's going to start off spinning fast and then slow down to its final position. So if we click fast on the first keyframe. This is what it looks like, which is perfect. And then we drag our cursor from the right, which is eight seconds. And then we're going to make a marker at six seconds, which is two seconds away from the end right there, hit a keyframe, and then we're going to copy the first keyframe, and we're going to paste it at the end. And then we're going to right click on this keyframe, and we're going to make it go slow. So basically, it's going to slowly start to roll away till its final position. So let's see what that looks like. And then it stops, which is great. And then it rolls away. Perfect. That's what we want. We want that animation first and we want it at 60 frames a second so if we highlight the whole thing we're going to render this so we go to file render as go to quicktime 7 if you don't have quicktime 7 that means you need to go download quicktime because when you install quicktime it adds a new render format i have a video explaining transparent backgrounds i'll link in a card above as well so we do quicktime 7 we're going to do our transparent one we're going to do youtube logo spin we'll just name it that to the desktop render once we're done let's close that go to the desktop and drag in your new animation which is right there so we want to right click on the track go to properties go up to media and do alpha channel and then change it to straight unmatted or pre-multiplied hit ok now we have a transparent background video we can ungroup it from its audio by pressing u clicking on the track deleting it so now we have our animation. Next is we want to resize it. So the best number I used was to make sure that lock aspect ratio and size about center are enabled. Click the width and type in 1280 and then add a zero. So 12,800. Hit enter and then it's a pretty good size right here. That brings us to step two. Let's bring in this bar. So in the same folder you downloaded, look at the YouTube bar and drag that in. Now we have our bar. Let's put it at the beginning. So now we want to position this YouTube logo to end right at the end of this bar right over here. So we zoom out a little bit. Let's drag this bad boy here. You could even have it. 
You can position it wherever you want as long as it's covering the end. So maybe like that looks pretty good. And that is our ending position for this animation. So like the spin we did, what we want to do is drag our marker up two seconds again, right when the spin should end, make a keyframe because that is our landing position. Bring this back, click on this keyframe, and then we're going to move. I like to move an X only when I'm doing this so I know I'm only going left and right. And then I'm going to drag this out of frame. I like to drag it as far as I possibly can so you'll get stopped right there. So once we've done that, let's take a look at what this looks like. Let's move the bar out of the way too so we can just see the animation. And then it stops. Okay, so I see what we need to do right here. We need to right click on the first keyframe and then we need to do fast. So it starts off fast and ends slow. Let's see where that goes. Perfect. And then what we're gonna do is click the back, which is eight seconds, drag our marker backwards till we hit six seconds. Perfectly right there. Add the keyframe. Copy the first one, paste it at the end. And we're gonna change this one to slow. So let's see what that looks like. Quickly rolls in, stops, and then rolls away. Perfect. So now we want to animate the bar to go with this, which is fairly easy. So there's a few ways to do this. So I'm gonna drag this out all the way to the eight seconds. And then I'm gonna play the animation until I see about half of the circle. So if we go frame by frame, forward, Two, about two, 22 frames in. So that's about 11 seconds. So we want this to be just entering at 11 seconds. And then two seconds later, then we wanna find where this ends, which is two seconds. Then we drag the timeline to the two second mark, which is where our icon stops moving right there. Then we're gonna insert a keyframe. And that is our original spot. So let's take this first keyframe, control X, do the second keyframe, paste. And then we're going to right click on this one and do fast. So let's see how that looks. That's real close. So let's see where it is. So it's trailing just a little bit behind. So we probably can move this a couple keyframes back. See what that looks like. Oh yeah, rolls out nicely. Cool. So let's do that again. Let's see how many frames that is, 10 frames. So, we want to do the same thing. We want to go two seconds back from the end, add a keyframe, copy this one, then we're gonna go 20 frames back, about right there. Paste it, and then we are going to make this one slow. So let's see what that looks like. Looks good there. Looks good there. So we can still see a little bit of this red right here, and we're gonna take that out by clicking this first keyframe, moving it about two frames. And at the end, two frames. So now we have our animation. Now let's make the text work with it too. We're gonna do something a little bit different with the text. Since the bar is actually moving, we don't want the text to move with the bar. That'll look kind of weird. We want the circle to reveal the text as it goes across the bar. So we're gonna drag this down. Then we're going to insert some text. I like using legacy text because you can use more fonts that way. So I'm going to click that right here. Let's go to about the middle of the track so we know the full length of this. And let's name, let's just name this anything. Let's do Josh or something like that. Let's drag this here for you. Let's shrink it a little bit. Uh, looks like 24 is pretty decent. Move the placement of where we want it. That looks pretty good. Then we need to work on the reveal, which the best way to do the reveal is actually using a video transition of wipe. So we scroll down to linear wipe. This is what we're gonna be using. We can do right left hard edge. Let's drag that in there and we're gonna flip it. We're gonna go angle is actually zero. So that means that it's gonna go from the left to right. Just like that. So we just need to line this up with the circle. So let's drag that open and then we're gonna drag this so this is where we gotta play with it. I'm gonna click right about here and see what that looks. It looks like I found a pretty good spot. So we drag this opacity down, you'll see what we're doing. So right here, we slow it down. We have the text wipe matching the speed of our icon. 
So it's unwiping the text halfway through the icon's movement. So it makes it look like our icon's revealing the text. So there we go, which is good. And then we wait for it to come back. We gotta do the same thing. So we want it to start wiping away right there. So we drag this backwards. Do right to left. This one we're gonna keep it the same. So it looks like right about there we got it taken care of. So let's bring this back up. We are wanting the wipe to start moving the text away as the circle crosses it. So here comes the icon. It's rolling. And the text is gone. And that's perfect. That is absolutely great for our text. Now it gets a little bit trickier when you start adding more text because you gotta time these wipes perfectly and then mess with the opacity. But I've already done all that for you in the project file that you've downloaded in the description below. So you don't gotta worry about that. I'm just showing you the basics of how this is made because it's good to learn and develop your own techniques and styles so you're not really plagiarizing anybody. Yeah, people give these projects away for free, but a good editor and somebody who wants to evolve and master their craft learns this technique by somebody teaching them and then evolves it and makes it better and makes it their own. So I just wanted to show you this is another way to make lower thirds and it's fairly simple so feel free to use the project I provided below. One last thing is when you're rendering this you do want to render it with a transparent background in the QuickTime format so whenever you drag and drop it into your project you just got to right click on the track go to properties media and then change the alpha channel and then you've totally removed the background and it makes a perfect lower thirds. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey everyone, thanks for watching that tutorial video. If you liked it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And if you want, you can also consider supporting my Patreon because the more patrons I have, the better giveaways and more frequent I could throw them. I also sell a bunch of stuff on Amazon and TeePublic. And if you want to be in on the loop and eligible to earn extra entry points, be sure to check out the community section on my YouTube page. That's where I'll be posting all my updates along with all the social media in the description. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.